Welcome to my lecture online. Among the most successful missions at any time to any planet to any location had to be Spirit and Opportunity. The two rovers that roamed on Mars for years and took enormous number of pictures and discovered amazing things and of course entertained us and wowed us with the enormous panoramic views that we got from different angles at different locations on the surface. Well, let's take a look and see when they launched and what happened during these missions. Well, first of all, they were launched, both Spear and Opportunity, in June and July of 2003, about one month apart, and they arrived about three weeks apart in January of 2004, so they were on their way for about seven months. Once on the surface, Spirit ended up traveling 7.7 .7 kilometers and Opportunity managed to travel over 45 kilometers, slightly over 28 miles remotely on the surface of Mars. Now, it turned out that Spirit did have some problems. I think one of the wheels began to get locked and they were having some trouble, trouble dragging that wheel and eventually it ran out of power and wasn't able to continue. Uh, but it did manage 7.7 .7 kilometers for a period of a little bit over six years. It lasted until March of 2010 when communication stopped. Opportunity lasted over 14 years, traveled over 45 kilometers before the end of that mission, before communication was lost in that mission. And it was just absolutely remarkable how long that rover just continued to last. For, imagine 14 years on that extremely hostile surface, having to weather, uh, weather two dust storms, and on top of that, the Martian winter, which of course is extremely frigid. Some information about the rovers, uh, the rover itself had a mass of 185 kilograms, which is about 400 pounds, so that's a huge step up from, uh, from Spirit and, um, not from Spirit, um, from Sojourner, who only managed to travel about 100 miles on the surface, and of course that rover was only about 20 pounds, or about 10 kilograms, so a huge step up in size and capability of these rovers. The lander was 348 kilograms, the shell and the parachute added up to 209 kilograms, the heat shield was 78 kilograms, the cruise stage that stayed in order was 193 kilograms, 50 kilograms of propellant and 5 kilograms of instrumentation came out to a little over 1,000 kilograms or about 2,300 pounds, which is the weight of a subcompact car. So that was quite a bit, a big step up in how big the object was that they ended up getting to Mars and landed safely. What were some of the major discoveries? Now here on the map you can see that the Spirit landed right here towards the right of the map an opportunity to land right here. So again, both of them landed in the region just of the highlands where you'd expect most of the sediments to occur. If that once upon a time, water was flowing from the highlands down to the lowlands. So they picked those up, those uh, positions. Of course, if you try to land further north, you have to deal with much colder temperatures, which is much more difficult to manage. So they landed relatively close to the equator where the temperatures wouldn't be quite as cold in the wintertime. So what were the major discoveries and accomplishments? Well, first of all, they discovered that Mars did indeed have a wet and warm conditions once upon a time. There's no question about it. Lots of evidence indicated standing water, neutral water, vast amounts of water with all kinds of chemical processes taking place. So there was no question that was the case. They did find sedimentary rocks. So here we have a picture of sedimentary rocks. And again, sedimentary rocks can only form in standing water or kind of in rivers as well, but there had to be water, a substantial amount of it once upon a time for sedimentary rocks to form. They also found spheres of hematite, uh, and notice we call them blueberries, here's a picture of them, and again those things can only form if you have standing water. So again, uh, evidence was uh, all over the place indicating that once upon a time Mars did indeed have a very wet past. They also found mineral gypsum. This is a uh, mineral gypsum right here, which is indication that water runs through cracks, subsurface cracks, and then forms this mineral gypsum in the process. And they also found clay minerals, which can only have been formed in neutral pH uh, water, in other words, around the pH 7. And so, again, all indications that there was a wet, clim uh, wet climate. Not only that, they also found a meteorite coming from another source, uh, 
maybe from the asteroid belt, who knows, but uh, they did find a, uh, a, a rock that did not come from the planet Mars originally. The endurance was phenomenal, more than 14 years for opportunity. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's, we can't say more uh, about it, how tremendous that accomplishment was. It managed to cover 28 miles. Remember, this is a remote robot that had to overcome all kinds of obstacles. At one point, they had to climb a slope of about 31 degrees at Endurance Crater. They actually produced a model on the Earth and they, they maneuvered it in uh, sand dunes at the similar slope to try and figure out how to maneuver it through those extremely difficult conditions. They then sent commands to the rovers to be able to manage a methodology of getting out of the sometimes very difficult terrain, a lot of sand, loose sand and uh, desert-like terrains. And they managed to get through that. They weathered uh, two dust storms, one in 2007, one in 2018. Of course, 2018 was eventually where, where opportunity uh, ceased to function. Uh, once you experience a dust storm, the problem is that the solar panels get covered by this fine dust that really reduces the amount of energy that can be produced using the solar panels. You have to then live off the batteries. Eventually they run down. If you don't get the power, uh, you can't restore the, uh, the, the energy collection, the solar energy collection with the panels. Uh, essentially they're sitting ducks and so they did not fully survive the uh, second, um, second dust storm. Uh, now of course Spirit was already done in 2010 but the uh, opportunity went through uh, two dust storms and survived both of them, but eventually succumbed to that. An enormous amount of data collected, and of course, 340,000 pictures. Imagine that's going to be years and years and years of looking at the pictures and analyzing the pictures and, and being able to learn from that. So this just an absolute amazing feat with these two, uh, these two rovers, and we learned so much on the surface of these two of the planet using the information from the two rovers and by far there's no question there was so much evidence that Mars once upon a time had lots of water on the surface uh, there's no question now that yes when there was a lot more atmosphere Mars was a very different planet unfortunately we weren't around to visit it back then that would have been quite something take a, a dip at the beach on a Martian ocean <laughs>